Hello and welcome to Meatman Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Steve Wiss and this is going to be the Ivory Coast part of the save. The first match is um, uh, introducing uh, on this international save uh, section and um, it's the build up really towards the, uh, the World Cup. These are the fixtures we've got. In 2026, we're starting with two African nations qualifying matches against Mali and Burundi. Then we've got three friendlies before the World Cup. So, in this particular video, we're going to be doing the Mali game and the Burundi game. Now, the Burundi game, I normally probably wouldn't do a match like this. They're 149th in the world. I mean, it's going to be an absolute cakewalk. But just to get you to used to this Ivory Coast team and the tactics they use here, I will be doing that match as well. Um, we want to six favourites to win that, so you can imagine how it's going to go. Um, this match here, we're five to four favourites to beat Mali, and I'm a little bit surprised we're not shorter because Mali aren't that great. They um, they actually beat us the, uh, three years ago in the African Nations Group B. That was a I think it was a dead rubber for us. It was uh, we'd already qualified, but. Uh, Obviously a defeat there, but they're 45th in the world, which is similar actually to a couple of our opponents in the World Cup um, coming up this summer, but their schedule recently, they've not had a great time of it, really struggled in the African Nations uh, World Cup qualifying group, they finished bottom of their group here, look, uh, it was a tough group, don't get me wrong, the Ghana, Cameroon, Senegal, um, in that group, I don't really know how such uh, mega nations appeared in there, but they didn't win a match, um, which perhaps isn't that surprising against opponents of that calibre. But it just shows you the level they're at. We should be winning them, be beating them fairly comfortably, in my opinion. I'd be disappointed if we don't get three points today. Um, this is our group. We've got Burundi, Mali, Mozambique on the other side in it, and they're 114 in the world. It's going to be a cakewalk. We'll easily qualify for the African Nations Cup, don't worry about that, but um, this is going to be one of the harder games, uh, Mali away will be the hardest, but um, let's go with the tactics, and this is hopefully the side that we're going to have starting in the World Cup in 2026, um, give or take, as long as no injuries come in, this is the lineup I'm leaning towards, certainly that midfield trio of Kessier, Gabama, Traore, um, I'm going with Fulgini right back and Conan left back Shipper at That back four hopefully will stay the same. Um, I think the things that could interchange is in this attacking department. Pepe, I still haven't decided if I want him on that right wing as an inside forward or I want him as the striker. And it's the same with Zaha on the left corner on the right. Who am I going to have in those positions? I'm sticking with them now, but Bio is a potential option to come in up front. But he's better as a complete forward, and I want an advanced forward in this formation. And on the wing, we've got options. Boga, although his fitness level is terrible. Um, Jeremy Boga. And uh, Michael Kwame can play left, right, or up front as an advanced forward. So there's other potential options there. In midfield, we've got uh, players like uh, Sangare, Doombia here who can come in. And uh, Jean Ahulu as well, and they'll probably I might give him a run out against Burundi actually, um, but these three in the middle will be the main starters. So let's get into it. Mali at home, four-three-three formation, and uh, as I say, I went through these tactics before, and um, not too many complications at all really. What you see is what you get here. Um, a few extra bits, but uh, that is the uh, formation and uh, tactics. So. Uh, the midfield is probably more interesting, so I've got a box-to-box -box midfield at Kessier, Gabama and uh, Amari Traor as a Mazawa. Not usually a, um, a sort of position I use very often, but um, it is his best preferred role, or box-to-box -box midfield, but Frank Kessier um, needs to be my box-to-box -box man. So, I don't I mean, could you have two box-to-box -box midfielders? Maybe, but um, I'm just utilising the best uh, position for my player really here in Traore. He is a 60 million rated midfielder who plays for Barcelona. So fitness wise looking alright, not bad actually considering it's just three days since a lot of these players would have played for their teams, they're in good um, morale 
this is the other challenge of international management. Look down here, the substitute bench. One, two, three, four, five, at least six players who just haven't been getting any game time at all, uh, unfortunately, um, which is <laughs> a big problem, isn't it? Substitutions, Kasu. Now, actually, I need to check the rules here. It might only be seven subs. Most international football, you do get it, but you need seven subs. So that was a bit of a cock up from me. I should have got that sorted before the video. Um, seven subs. Who are we going to have? Uh, we want one goalkeeper. Kasu, I think, probably will have. Um, yeah, I mean, we need options. Don't we? He's just not fit enough. Kusanu is just not fit enough. Doing it. I'm basically benching the players who haven't got the fitness at the moment. So. Simple as that. We're going to this match as five to four favourites to beat Mali. I'm expecting a win. I'm hoping for a win. Um, I enjoy, I really enjoy managing this Hard Rico side. It's the, these, I mean, these players are the the top players I've worked with in the game so far. You know, I've, I've obviously managed at Hamburg, Kalmar, played, you know, under, got some good players underneath there, but these guys are worth. 50 60 million, so it's fantastic for me to work with guys like Kessier and that going forward. And uh, uh, I like to rouse up the uh, the players with a uh, swing for the fans, you know, get them passionate. No reaction, but sometimes that happens in international football. Uh, a few daft questions will come out in this tunnel interview. I don't know why I do these tunnels, I should do the assistant, let the assistant take them, but. Uh, you know, you never know what come, might come up. We're facing it looks like four three three as well. Uh, you don't often see that, do you? Three strikers really it looks a narrowish short formation. Usually, I have a good record against teams who line up like that. I must say, um, they should, might be able to got that. Anyway, here we go. Starting the match, Ivory Coast against Mali, and. Uh, Hopefully we can get a victory. Not much going on so far. Uh, free kick for them, Basuma. Off the wall. Can we break Wolf Sahar? 33 years old now in my game. Has lost a little bit of pace. You know, I think uh, there's not much left for him really after this. And as a goal, the first goal. Nicola Pepe. 1-0 Ivory Coast. Bit of a lucky ricochet. But we'll take it. Zaha's already got a book in after five minutes. <laughs> it is a bit of a feature in my teams. A lot of players in my teams do get bookings because I like them to go in hard. Chance here, Hamaru Traore gets it in. But yeah, I do have a lot of yellow cards. It has cost me in international tournaments before. Oh, Mali. Mali, but chance this is squared. Oh, how did the earth did they not score there? What an opportunity. That just seemed easy to score, didn't it? Crazy stuff. The defence, this Ivory Coast defence isn't that good really. I mean, it's okay. The left and right back positions are massive weaknesses. Um, the goalkeeper's a huge concern. Uh, we've got a couple of reasonably good central defenders worth, I think, 10 and 20 million, which is okay. It's where we'll get found out in the World Cup, no doubt about it. Um, we probably need to work on a formation before the World Cup to try and be a bit more solid, but Conan's done well, they left forward, oh, get the crossing better, you know, against these sort of nations, no problem, and which is why the main objective going forward is to win the African Nations 2027 20, with this team, I really feel he, he, he's capable of doing it, two third places before, um, hopefully it'll be third time lucky, but, you know, World Cup, be nice to get a good run going. We're going to be relying on goal scoring goals in the World Cup. That's for sure. We need to be out scoring opponents. We need the likes of Pepe, Corne, Zaha to do well. Pepe's the key man. We can't afford him to get injured. What a great hit from Nicola Pepe. He's really good in this game. He's been an absolute stalwart for me. I'd love to know what his record is since I took over. But he scored a lot of goals. and I initially had him on that right wing. Is the inside forward? Um, he missed a lot of chances in the original 
game before they did the update. You know, loads of one on ones were missing, missed all the time. Um, but I switched into advanced forward up front, and uh, yeah, I mean, he delivers the goods for me. Absolutely crucial, he stays fit for me, uh, you know, going into the World Cup. Um, I've, if I've got any chance of being competitive and making it to that third round objective, then he cannot be injured. I think it's as simple as that. Really, two 0 against Mali here, and I mean they should have scored, shouldn't they? But oh, here's a chance for Corne. Yeah, Corne. This right wing position is one, but I'm not sure about. And we might even switch it at half time actually. Um, right wing, left wing. I'm not sure about. Yeah, I've got options. So Kessier, I love Kessier. One of my favourite players in this game. Box to box, he'll have a shot at some point. He likes to have his long shots, but this midfield it excites me. You know, Fulgini now the uh, Fulgini. Oh, good cross. Should have, should have done better there, Pepe. Um, if Fulgini wouldn't be starting here. It would be Serge Aurier, but Aurier's out for 11 months with a spinal injury. Um, if Fulgini goes down injured, I've got real problems. I'm probably going to end up having a probably a natural centre back. At right back, really. Pepe. Oh, he's good, isn't he? Can he get that ball in? Can we get on the end of it? Maybe no. But we tend to dominate with Ivory Coast, don't we? Now stay here. Zahar. I found Zahar a difficult player in this in this game at times. I've tried him inside forward. I've tried him wing. I've tried him as a striker. You don't always get the best out of Wilfred Zahar. In this game, he's 33 now. Like I say, haven't been able to master it now. Pepe for the hat trick. Oh, team, team, come on! You're better than that. You are better than that, Nicola Pepe. I mean, this is domination, isn't it? Absolute domination. I'm beginning to wonder whether I should even bother doing the the Burundi video next because it, it's just going to be absolute one-way traffic, isn't it? Could be nine or ten nil if we stick if we go with regular starting eleven. <laughs> Zaha now, go on Zaha. Conan. Ah, uh, you know what? We've had these left and right backs. Although I criticised them as a weakness, they've put in some good crosses. Eighteen shots, ten on target already. Mental. Pepe also takes the corners and free kicks. He does everything for this team. You know, why are we on possession? 61% possession, we really dominate. We're not even trying to be um, short passing either, that's the thing. We're, um, you know, we're just normal passing, I think, maybe slightly more direct even. So to, this is how dominant we are in Africa at times. 39 minutes, 2 0. Probably should have had more. Look at this 24 shots. I get this a lot with Ivory Coast, a lot of shots. Not enough of them usually on target. 12 on target is not bad. But we tend to score more through sort of scattergun approach rather than being clinical. Conan, I think Conan's had a good half, good half, deserves an assist. And look at this finishing again, it's not great, is it? This could have been an absolute landslide. Half time, it's not half time, we're going to have another chance before half time, maybe to make it three. Can we get our third goal? Oh, 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 oh yes. Yes. From Kessier. He's absolute class. You know, if I don't have Pepe in Kessier for the World Cup, I'm absolutely screwed. So 26 shots at half time, 64% possession, we're 3 0 up. Game's won in it. It's absolutely won, and it's probably going to lead to a pretty poor second half. But I want to see some other players in action in a somewhat against somewhat competent opposition. They're not been very good at it, but let's see what I'm going to put Pepe in that inside forward role. We're going to give a chance to Bio up front as an advanced forward. He's not a natural advanced forward, and Michael Kwame. We're going to put him. I forget what is his. Best foot. He's 
do it better with the right foot but I'm going to have him as a left winger I like to have a winger and an inside forward not two inside forwards ideally Pepe is at 676 I don't want to overdo Pepe do but I don't want to take him off on two goals either it, it, again it should be one way traffic in this half probably wouldn't be surprised if it ended 3 0 or 4 really knowing this lot they were just slacking off there was a lot of complacency but I wasn't going to upset them by demanding focus in a game which is clearly going to be won they, they like my team talks these players they like me to be positive towards them and they did play very well in the half so they deserved it but this is kind of the challenge of, of, of managing Ivory Coast in that the majority of the fixtures, literally probably 80% plus, nearly 90% of the fixtures are going to be cakewalks for me. Um, the only time it gets difficult is you know, in the Ivory, African nations later stages really. Kessier again with this shot. He loves his shots from Kessier. Um, if we look at the shots fired in Attacking, heading, passing, crosses. Ah, uh, where is it? Can't seem to find it. But anyway, he usually gets a lot of crosses in. Uh, sorry, a lot of uh, shots in. Does Kessier scores with them as well? But usually requires a lot of his shots. Now, full genium, just to see how he does. I don't think he's had a bad game. Be honest with you, Kwame. Is he gonna have another shot here, Kessie? Yeah, no. This is full genie, get across in full genie. By and large we don't put enough crosses in. We're just always looking further back. And that should have been a hat trick for Pepe. Nice football, you know, isn't it? Nice football. I don't want to overdo Nicholas Pepe here. But I do want I'd love him to get a hat trick and then take him off. Well, look after your players, haven't you? Really? Now, oh, Marley. They did have that one massive chance, didn't they, early doors, Marley? But um, they've been basically uh, nothing threat all game. It's been absolutely one way traffic. Oh, my picture of the bear there. Even in this second half, when we've been. Hey, they might actually get an opportunity here, Marley. And there it was. Big chance. They waste it again. <clears throat> I say again, they've not really had many opportunities. Now is the time. I'm not going to cock around with Pepe. I would hate to see him get injured. Um, so we're going to move Pepe out. Have we got anyone to come on for him? Not really. What is our other formation? We do have the two up front option. We can go there maybe. Let's attack. We need an attacking midfielder, which probably would be Amari Traore, I think. So then we can bring on Mazala. Something like Doombia would do the trick better. It's a box to box midfielder, but this should do nicely. In this different formation, I do like the. Um, 4-3-1-2 narrow sometimes <clears throat> it uh, goes down nicely I mean whether or not I'd use it in the World Cup that often I don't know we've absolutely dominated this game we were 5-4 to four favourites before kick off which is ridiculous isn't it when you think about it that's unbelievable price I said we should have been odds on clear odds on um, I, I mean whoever backed that 5-4 to four, I was just laughing all the way to the bank aren't they I mean this is just been a walk over but I did say didn't I at half time that knowing this team it'd be three or four only we, we're not the sort of side that turns the screw enough as simple as that we waste too many chances we get slack and, and you can understand it can't you to a degree but um, it would be nice it would have been nice to kick on and get quite a few more goals in this half but I didn't expect it 
the goalkeeper has not been tested so we've not really learned much there today um, goalkeeper is a weak area for, for the for the team unfortunately going forward um, against some good sides be tested and will we'll maybe be found out in fact goalkeeper cost me in the first African nation's third place that I had actually um, it was a terrible mistake that knocked me out in the semi-final now Cassier is a good game and he Cassier oh, he got a card though so we're going to have a shot blocked we haven't created near, uh, near nowhere near as much Oh, they should score here. Oh, what a chance that is. Gineppo. Wasn't he Southampton in real life at the moment? He's actually missed a couple of good chances. This is how slack we've been in this half. That Marley should have scored today. They've not had much in the way of opportunities all match, but they definitely should have had a goal. They've, had, they've created a couple of big chances. Now, are we going to... Nah. Game's pretty much done, isn't it? Let's be honest, but it'd be nice to get a clean sheet. Oh, no. another chance for Marley. They're starting to come strong here at the end. We've been really slack to finish the game off. Good first half, wasn't it? But poor in second. Bio, go on, get me a goal. Get a goal. Show me why you need to be starting. The problem with Bio, he just doesn't suit that advanced forward role that I like. And I've tried him as the complete forward and it just don't work either. I'm not going I don't like going with two up top too often. He doesn't suit my tactics bio, even though he's worth like nearly forty million. He's not done enough for me. You know? That's the problem. With international management you can't sometimes you have to work around your players don't you um, and I dare say if he was my only option I would have to somehow do a tactic where it was complete forward you know but it's hard going into final whistle I said this was going to be 3-0 didn't I or 4 I know this team too well we should have had more goals but we haven't 3-0 win to start the African Nations qualifying campaign probably about 40 shots 41 shots, 21 on target, 55% of possession. Dominated the game. Yes, they're complacent, uninterested. This happens. You know? It's a walk in the park most of the time. 81% win rate I've got with Ivory Coast, and I'd say 81% of those games. Um, you would do the job. Mozambique beat Burundi 4 1. Looks more even on stats, though. So if Mozambique are beating Burundi 4-1, what are we going to beat them? We will come back for the um, the next. You know, I'm not even going to go to the press conference here. The assistant can go. We're going to come back. I'll uh, come back for the Burundi game. Um, <laughs> I think. I guess the question is how many, isn't it? But maybe we'll see some other players in this Ivory Coast team. I'll probably rotate it around a bit. But uh, a good start, 3-0, and uh, we're on our way.